What's up, fuckers? Welcome back to another episode of Murder One Entertainment. I can't speak. Emma Entertainment. Emma Entertainment. Entertainment. Um. Wow. I know. Right? Two days in a row. Um. What did I <clears throat> I wanted to, I mean, if you guys haven't noticed, the Extreme Metal episode was taken down. <coughs> um, for only the reason, I just wanted to redo it. Um, I didn't like the lighting. Um, yeah, mainly, the, you know, the lighting was, I didn't like the lighting, I wanted to redo it. Um, so, Extreme Metal. I would say that it started with Hate Breed and Pantera. Pantera first, because I remember my dad showing me Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. Um, not really knowing what to think of it, never really heard anything like it before, kind of blew it off. Um, and then hearing Death Rattle. In that one SpongeBob, SpongeBob episode, I didn't know. I didn't know who was Pantera. I didn't until like I was older. Um, you know, after listening to uh, Reinventing the Steel, and then oh my god, and then re recognizing that um the song. Um, so that kind of like subconscious put that something in my mind subconsciously. You know, hearing the double bass. Especially the way Vinny Paul sounds. You know, I always liked it. Um, and then especially in the episode, the song had a lot of, uh, you know, dime bag squeals and shit. And, you know, all that good stuff. I can't get fucking comfortable. Um, and then Hate Breed. I remember hearing, me and my dad were watching something on VH1 Classic or something back when they used to play like metal videos and shit and it was a live concert version of Destroy Everything and I vaguely remember my dad being like alright we gotta turn this off because I don't want your mother hearing you listen to it listen to this and I was like 10 or 11 not really knowing who they were and then my dad reintroducing them to me with their self-entitled album you know, I think the first song other than other than De uh, uh, Destroy Everything was The Ashes They Shall Reap on that album. And, you know, that was my first tape read album and then that's when I I'm like I, re I discovered that, that Destroy Everything was their song. I'm like, oh, I remember this. But um But yeah, it was Hate Breed and then hearing Slipknot for the first time. My dad had gotten the first album, and I would play it here and there, and I really, I was starting to get into the more extremer stuff other than Metallica and, you know, those bands. And then, kind of went stagnant for a little bit, a couple years, and I really didn't start getting into the extremer stuff until my buddy Cooper, um, Introduced me to um, Amon Amarth. It was the first song I heard by them was "Deceiver of the Gods," and it was absolutely blown away, especially with their guitar tone and their riff writing. And then after that, I literally I went right and listened to um, "Twilight of the Thunder God" the song, and was completely blown away by that. And then I got that album. I like that song better. I still do. Don't get me wrong. To see their gods is still a good, um, still a great song. But I prefer uh, Twilight of the Thunder God over there. And being Norse pagan and, and uh, you know, Thor. Thor is the god that I choose to uh, pray to and represents me. That song spoke to me. <clears throat> and then, um, but yeah, uh, 
got really into Amana Marth. I think after I got Twilight of the Thunder God, I got, um, because that's my first kill. Not first kill. Not first kill? No. I keep saying the fucking, the, the, uh, it's Yom's Viking, not first kill. First kill's the first song. Yom's Viking, when that, when that came out, I got that. Because that kind of had like a slightly different sound to it. And then I think after that, I got Deceiver of the Gods. I got, um, after that I got, was it Asa, I, I, um, the first, the, no, fucking Sutter Rising. And then after that, I got, um, with Odin on our side. As of right now, with Odin on our side is my favorite Amon Amarth album. I tried to get into their earlier stuff when I first got into them, but um, production quality was a little bit, uh, the lack thereof was a little bit um, on the rougher side, especially, I don't know, <coughs> on a Pursuit of the Vikings, um, Johan's voice, uh, especially his growls, was a little, um, it wasn't as... Uh, Guttural. It was well. I guess it was guttural. It didn't have a lot of bass to it, but the earlier shit, it kind of sounded like it did. It does now. I don't know. Um, no, I don't know um, how they recorded his voice on that one, but it sounded a little bit different. And then, as of recent, this is when I I, I went back again and um, uh, rediscovered their earlier albums. And I listened to all of them. I like uh, Versus the World, but my favorite album is. Um, with Odin on our side. I think my favorite song off there is um, either Asator or um, uh, uh, it's the Black, Cry the Blackbirds, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, Monomarth was my first exposure, really to death metal and the more extremer side of metal. Um, I had knew of Cannibal Corpse at that time. I've, I heard Hammer Smash Face. The other song I heard by them at that time was um, Kill Every Calm. Um, Cannibal Corpse was kind of like the tip of the iceberg when it came to uh, extreme metal journey. I think after after um, I'm on a Marth, I kind of I, I rode that wave a little bit for a couple of years. Um, I think around one that time I heard at the gates and they kind of the earlier stuff. I think even some earlier stuff kind of has that same kind of tone that um, the Swedish death metal tone. Uh, I believe what it's it's a metal zone with every fucking knob cranked to fucking full with, with active pickups. So, um, and then, you know, just experimenting with different, with different stuff and then trying to get into Cannibal Corpse. Because at the time, I thought Cannibal Corpse was too, too fast. You know, it was, it was too much. I didn't understand it. And that's how my kind of, my, my musical journey went. Once I got to the point, you know, I got to what my threshold, I thought my threshold was, I kept wanting more. I'm like, all right, I need something fast, I need something heavier. That's what kind of what happened with the modern mark. So I'm like, you know what? It was it was on one of the days where I was, I was doing a, a test for my job and coming back on the bus. I, um, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to buy a Cannibal Corpse album. To the mutilated. I mean, I'm gonna listen to it and I'm gonna get into it. And I think at that time, I'm kind of drawing a blank between Amon Amarth and Cannibal Corpse. Because Cannibal Corpse was like the tip of the iceberg for me, but it also was the next step, I, I feel. So I got to the mutilated and listened to it. I finally got it. I was just listening to it, listening to the riff writing, and then that's when I discovered their um, Centuries of Torment 
video or, or DVD and watched that religiously on YouTube and got into the band and I think the second album I got from them was Skeletal Domain because that had Killer Become on it um, and you know, but when you, you know that was after Rob joined the band again and they kind of had that more of a don't get me wrong, we're still Cannibal Corpse. But they had more of a groove to them. They were a little heavy. They were, don't get me wrong, they're always been heavy, but you know, Rob Barry probably brought more of a groove to them, I, I feel. And now with Eric Rutan in the band, don't get me wrong, Pat O'Brien was a great guitarist. He, he was with them for a lot of years, but I feel like Eric brings another another level. I just, I guess with his tone, I feel like it's a little more raw. Um... He just has a very good presence too. He fits the, he fits well in the band. They're all fucking scary dudes, and I love that about them. And I can't wait for uh, the Corpse Grinder album to come out it's soon. I think. Um, but after I got into Cannibal Corpse, that is when it kind of like opened the can of worms, because you know, hearing all the bands they talked about in in the movie, like Malevolent Creation and Obituary and suffocation and you know and then learning about the Swedish bands and that's when I kind of like started you know getting into it more like looking up more bands because I had Spotify and then I, that's when I got Spotify I'm like okay I could search all these bands and then you know I'm like oh wow they all sound the same there's a lot of them went to Morrisown down in Florida you know um I think another one of my favorite death metal bands. I would probably have to say, uh, then death, of course. How can I not talk about death? Um, finding, I remember hearing about death and not knowing who they were, but I always liked, I liked their logo, and I'm like, I'm gonna try these guys out, you know. And then I think I forget what I forget what concert it was. It was one of the, it was one of their later concerts. I think it was right after um, what's the last album? The last the last album. That, that's what it came out. I think it was they did some concerts after that right before Chuck died um, because I remember they were doing Spirit Crusher or something like that. I'm like, okay, this these guys sound cool. You know, I I prefer their earlier stuff opposed to their more progressive stuff. I think Chuck's voice was a little better when he was doing the guttural stuff, opposed to the high pitch screams. I feel like I feel like it suited him better. I mean, obviously because he's done it longer, but um, I think my favorite album by them is Leprosy. Um, I was just listening to Leprosy the other day, and that. Excuse me, my jaw hurts. Fucking the way I fucking sleep on it. So I have to like pop it. Oh, the Scream Bloody Gore is another one of my favorites. Obviously, because it's the first album. Um, but yeah, I got into death. You know, learned who Chuck Sheldiner was. And, um, I'm trying to think. I'm drawing a blank here. Um. I tried listening to Obituary. Um, I like Obituary. They're very influential towards the, the death metal movement. Um, I haven't really listened to them that much. Um, I've heard Slillery Rot. You know, I'm not really. I didn't really get into them. Into them yet. I want to. Um, probably it'll be another one of those bands I listen to again. Or, Try and rediscover. Um, is the fuck is honking? Not at me. Yeah. Um, and then going from death metal, the only other way was was up. And I know in Corpse Grinder liked black metal and. Black metal was always a no-no with my dad. 
not really a no-no, but back when my dad was more religious, you know, we'd always preach, you know, black metal, you know, they're fucking extremists, and, you know, we were made to, you know, this, to, you know, to burn down churches and shit, and not knowing the actual story behind it, um, it was when I had my, uh, religious awakening was when was when I was like, you know what? I want to get into black metal. It intrigues me. I started off with bands like Immortal because I knew they weren't satanic. Like that meant something to me back back then. Like they weren't satanic. I'm like, okay. I like their sound. You know, they don't sound like you know recording something in a blender like a lot of the other earlier bands did. So I knew that I knew of. And after I discovered Mortal, was when I, I, I saw the movie come out, or, or it's on Hulu, Lords of Chaos. Now, I know there are mixed views on the movie, and me doing more research, I have my views on the movie too. The movie was a good movie, I think, that... Um, accuracy with the time period and the dress and the music, I'll give them that. But I'm kind of on Varg's side. Um, especially from other people saying, you know, Eastern Arthur Seth wasn't really a good dude, and the fact that Dead wouldn't come, come out of his room. <clears throat> until Oyston left, or Euronymous, if you want to call him that, you know, because he would fucking pester the kid and, you know, tell him to fucking kill himself, ultimately. I think that's why that ultimately killed himself, too, was because of Euronymous. And I think that, I, I don't think Varg was in the right for murdering him, <clears throat> whether it was self-defense or not. No, but I don't think Euronymous was not guilty or didn't deserve it because from the way even people describe him, he was kind of a piece of shit. You know, telling people about, like like early Dark Throne saying that. Now I get it. The scene, the the the, the, the Norwegian scene was anti death metal. You know, it all sounded the same. As a more sound, and I know Euronymous had his beef with with uh, the Scott Burns beef, if you want to call it that. Dude, never met him. Um, but you know him being this that metal elitist, if I, if I can call him that. It's like, yo, metal's metal, no matter what it is. No matter what genre, you know, it's metal. It all comes from the same thing. It all comes from three bands. Sabbath, Judas Priest, Motorhead. Okay? Metal's metal. It all has a different, different genres, different spins on it, but it's metal. And everyone should love all metal. Um, obviously, you'll like more one genre than, than another, but don't fucking criticize someone for liking a certain genre or wanting to be like someone else. Everyone has their influences, and I feel like people like Euronymous forget that. They forget where they came from, what bands they, well, what inspired, bands inspired them, other than Venom, you know, because he was so into Venom. <laughs> And I'm kind of on Varg's side about that because he really didn't. Because Varg didn't like Venom, and I've listened to Venom. It's all right. I do prefer the Norwegian style of black metal. Um, so after I got into Immortal, I listened to a Both's um, solo albums. It's more like black and roll. They were cool. And then after watching the movie, I'm like, all right, I'm going to 
could get into mayhem. And I bought the mysterious dumb Satanus and was blown away because it didn't sound like what I thought black metal was going to sound like. You know, the production on it was decent. I listened to that a lot. Um, I didn't really listen to any of Mayhem's newer stuff. I want to, but I haven't yet. And then I discovered Dark Throne, and I really got into Dark Throne. My favorite Dark Throne out. The Dark Throne. The Dark Throne albums are. Uh, Transylvanian Hunger, obviously, and Panzerfaust. Uh, I really like the albums. Soulside Journey is another good one too, even though it's death metal. I do think that. I think um, after Transylvanian Hunger, I feel like they kind of had more of a death metal sound to them, and then they did that. Um, Fenris and uh, the other dude, I forget what the name is, did that like punk, punk rock kind of black metal punk rock stuff. It was alright, and then kind of got iffy with some of the vocals and some other albums, and they kind of went, they kind of came back to their roots with um, their new album that came out. I feel like the new album was a little more Sabbath oriented, and I liked it. I got in the, the black, but the, the, the dark throne. I got in that, and then I found dark funeral, and, and that's when I was like, that was like when my fucking black metal kick was like full effect, you know. Fucking hell, Satan and shit, you know. I'm not Satanist, but you know, I, was, I wanted to go against fucking, you know, everyone else. Everyone else is Christian, so. All right. I don't believe in it, but fuck it. If you don't like it, hell Satan. Um, I'm not a Satanist. I'm not. I don't believe in Satan. I believe your heaven and hell is here on earth. I do believe there is an afterlife. I've experienced spirits. Um, I've had my experiences with them. I know there's something after death, but it's not what the Bible says. Pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, Dark Funeral. Satyricon, I can start listening to. I got around to listening more of their stuff. I like their sound. Gorgoroth is cool. Belf, Belfagor, Belfagor, whatever it is. I, got a, I started listening to them recently. I found this one band called um, Necrophobic. They're awesome. I just stumbled upon them on fucking Spotify. They're fucking awesome. Uh, Joey Jordison's Black Metal Project, rest in peace. Uh, Insanum was very good because had, they had Attila on it from uh, Mayhem. Um, I tried to listen to some Burzum. I like some person, but I like his earlier stuff. Um, what else? What other bands? Um, Watan. I try. I start listening to them. Not, not like all the time, but I have listened to them. I want to get into them. I've been kind of on a. Uh, I've been listening to Black Label Society a lot. I've been getting more into them again. Oh, again, always been in the Black Label. But I've been listening to more of my childhood stuff lately. But I'll get back. I'll, I'll, I'll start listening to the more extreme shit again. If I'm having a bad day, I'll fucking throw on some, like, Cannibal Corpse or, uh, or Death or something heavy. Um, but, yeah. Black metal, for me, is the peak. Uh, to me, it's you can't go anywhere from there. Tried getting into de a deathcore, metalcore. I'll give it to you. A lot of those bands are fucking brutal as shit. Especially um, Lorna Shore and uh, uh, fuck with 
that's the one. The Russian band, you know Yeah, the Russian guys with the masks. Um, the fuck are they called? You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. I, it'll, it'll come to me. I just, I'm drawing a fucking blank. I have them on my Spotify. Fuck, that's gonna fucking bother me. The fucking song's Demolisher. I, I know who they are. I just fucking can't remember their name. Drawing a blank. Tip my tongue, but I've tried. I don't know what about deathcore I don't like. It's just I don't know. Maybe song structures. Um, there are certain aspects I do like about deathcore, especially like guitar tones and, and, and vocals. But I never really got into them. Or you know, I was more of a, like a classic metal kind of, kind of guy. You know, classic metal, the like classic genres. The Death, Thrash, Black. Um, but other than that, but but that Black Metal was my is my what I thought was my peak. Um, and I think I've reached my final form as a metalhead now. I feel like I'm comfortable in my own skin with metal, and I feel like I can traverse the metalscape if you want to call it that. And I listen to a lot of everything. Even some non-metal stuff. I love country. I was just listening there in Lewis before I started doing this video. Um, but yeah, I think that wraps it up. My uh, second chart time doing this video. And I like the way I structured this video uh, better because it was a little more fluid. I feel like the other one was a little over, all over the place too. And you can see me better. But, um, thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, push the like button. If you want to see more, uh, hit subscribe. And 